now listening to The Bradshaw Boys, a podcast where three relatively grown men binge the iconic HBO series Sex and the City. So dust off those DVDs and grab yourself a white wine or even a cosmopolitan and settle in. Take it away, boys. Welcome to the Bradshaw Boys, a podcast where three guys are watching and just like that. And just like that, I'm Corey Cavan. I'm Kevin James Doyle. <laughs> My name is John Sieber. And, uh, and here we, we are. Episode are four. back. Mm-hmm. L- listen, Sex in the City. We came in hot. A lot of people have jumped off the train. We're still we're still cooking. This podcast is never ending. <laughs> Doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. Well, there's some things that could end it. Like, like, uh, like what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like what could end it? Like a terrorist attack on New York City? Oh, you're talking about our podcast? Or you're talking about the show? No, a terrorist attack wouldn't stop the podcast. I'm talking about the no. podcast. Are you kidding? We've we've potted through many terrorist attacks. That's true. <laughs> that is true. We, I mean, not on us, but not on they us. happen all the time. Not on us or our country, but That's terrorist grim. attacks are happening That's every dark. day. That is grim. That is. We can make it yeah. through terrorist attacks. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think we could. Yeah, no. Sex and the City week burned bright in New York City, and then <laughs> it uh, <laughs> it supernovaed and and died out like like a, a hot star. <laughs> real fast. Listen, this is this is this is what this podcast has had is the for the past four years cons- consistency. A lot of people came in hot. They're like, "Whoa." Sex in the city, you know, and there and everyone was all pumped and the brakes have got put on, but the boys are still cooking forward. I will say yeah. this because so many people have asked. Um, we decided not to say anything about well, last podcast is like what we're going to say. I didn't right. want to say this on the podcast because I think it would be wrong to put it out there, but. I was going to say like 100%. I think there will be nor- more Chris Noth accusers, mm. and there's mm-hmm. another. There's two more since we did the last podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that's very unfortunate. And I, I there could be more, but it seems like a sad pattern that is going to uh, yeah change yeah. change the perspective on Mr. Big from henceforth. A lot of people dancing. Saying "told you so" about Mr. Big, but just so everybody realizes, uh, it's a fucking character and a real human being with real <laughs> human being accusers. So I, I think like what what is what is I gotta choose my words carefully here. I think yeah. what is incredibly sad is the is the lives that were affected and ruined by his decisions. Uh, mm-hmm. I think something else that's also really heartbreaking is that there's a possibility that Sex and the City as a franchise or as a show uh, about strong, dynamic, powerful women who have interesting lives and friendships apart from men could potentially be, be tarnished by the decisions of said shitty men. And that's like, that's like yeah. a huge bummer for me that like the focus is being pulled away from how badass the show is and how empowering it is and amazing it is and was for women to this freaking shithead. So it, it sucks. Yeah. You know, also yeah. what's, <laughs> what's, what's just crazy because, uh, I got on and the amount of, um, we were texting one of our, our friends who's been on the podcast before on a heat about it. But, uh, when you look, when you look at the Instagram comments, and when people were reaching out, they're like, "What? What? Where do you stand? Like, what? Do you have anything to say?" I'm like, "Uh, uh like, not yeah, cool. We're, like, yeah, we're ups- anti, we're anti sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think that's what we would have to say. <laughs> and and it's like I have zero connection to this fucking person. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, besides this, the podcast. But I guess that's like where you end up. But right. But the amount of um. When when Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, and Kristen Davis all put their stuff, their statement out about it, right? I'm telling you what, the comments below are baffling to me because it was like fifty fifty. There were people that were just like, "How could you turn your back on him? Like you're bad friends," and like just like trashing all of the accusers. And it it, oh it was gosh. fascinating to read on the. I'm sure some of our listeners may, I mean, because they're Sex and the City fans, may feel that way, but. 
I I find it kind of weird whenever like people uh when people are shocked that anyone does something wrong. Mm-hmm. John and I are reading Dostoevsky right now, so I feel mm-hmm. like that's going to put us in a zone of just being like the depths of I, human depravity are endless I, and I don't I couldn't <laughs> believe that people were anti Bernie Madoff. I was I was rooting him on the entire time. <laughs> Ponzi scheme through Ponzi scheme when he got locked up my jaw hit the floor. I'll yeah. be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was a Bernie bro, not that Bernie Madoff. You were a ma- <laughs> Bernie, <laughs> you're a Bernie bro. You're a Bernie, Bernie. You're a Bernie bro and a Madoff man. That's who yeah, you were. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Do you know yeah, one it's, uh, one thing I want to, John? Tell me if you vibe with what I'm saying. But one thing that John and I have talked about in private, and then we've talked about on the podcast, but in private, John has basically said like one of the things that does not drive you is like we're all driven by like certain urges and you you said you've mm-hmm. like you're not driven by sex that's just not like yeah uh, I, I mean i would say i would say less so than the than the average person mm-hmm. like I, yeah. I i can't ever recall in in like my life that that capote duncan's motives ever rang like true to me mm-hmm. yeah. you know like i never made a decision based on that yeah that i mean i shouldn't say never but you know like that that was not when other, when the other bros in the locker room were talking about like that's all they wanted to do that felt foreign to me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I just know when I was and I've thought about this with a lot of like Me Too stories, especially ones that like have very two sided. You know, this is me trying to be as charitable to uh, not charitable to Chris Noth, but it's like charitable to the the side of like a drunken hornball. You know. Uh, which lots of <laughs> which lots of men can be. I mean, he was he, all yeah, the yeah, stories. Totally. He's drunk, and I know lots of right. And I know I've heard lots of stories of him being drunk around New York City, right? Um, and I just I know <clears throat> whenever I read some of those stories, they become such big cultural touchstones that, that's like around the world. People, the articles in every language now are like Mr. Big sexual assault. Yeah, and I think that like when you allow yourself to be fully driven by sexual urges at the expense of like listening to, you know, sex is an intimate thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it just becomes like, sorry to be vulgar, but it's like, I need to come and I'm horny Mm -hmm. and I'm Mm -hmm. rich and there's access to vagina and I'm, and I'm drunk. So my, my, (laughs) (laughs) that just, that, that, do you remember the sketch on SNL unfrozen caveman lawyer? Like (laughs) that is, I need to come. I am horny. <laughs> like it's it's your it's, it's I mean I it is it is it is to ca- vagina. I know it is caveman like behavior, but it, it is like it, it is. I mean, and it's, it's that's funny the way it sounds. It's like once you once you do that, and then you get to however it's like over the course of twenty five years, do that to a thousand people. It's like it, it, not just a numbers game, but it's like it's a thing of like an emotionally <laughs> bad game where you're just like lots of people. Like there's just a lot of destruction behind you that you can just like live and be like, well, whatever. I don't remember that night. Yeah, you know. I also I also like thinking about the way media is right now. That someone could clip this out and be like, the Bradshaw boys reveal that over 25 years, 1,000 women fell into the clutches of Christopher <laughs> Noth. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't say that exactly. We did yeah. call him a caveman. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I. Uh, I agree with it, you that being driven by that urge. I mean, you see that in, I have not read Dostoevsky, uh, but I think you see that in like a lot of classic literature where it's like people's a- appetites and vices get in the way of mm-hmm. things and then. Uh, and, and affect then other people. And affect we're, other people, we're going absolutely. Down to Russian literature, let's talk Lolita, Nebikov. Yeah. Well, some people say that that is American literature because he was Russian American. So there's a lot of debate about that. Yeah, I know. That was, that um, was challenging for me. Not gonna lie. If you've, if you've never read it, if you have read it, well, yeah. shoot, shoot us a message. Tell us, tell us what you thought. Yeah. The, the funny story about that we were reading in our book club, and Katie was at uh, uh, a house. She was working with some little kids at the time, and the mom was like, "What are you doing tonight?" And she's like, "I'm going to a book club." She's like, "What are you reading?" Thinking it was going to be, you know, like where the crawdads sing. Yeah, exactly. She's like. <laughs> Uh, Lolita and the mom was like, "That's really weird. That's okay. odd." But, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> have a happy holiday. 
Well, listen. Th- here's the other thing. Let's let's just let's just clean do our do, do our uh, Bradshaw Boys clearinghouse up top. The other thing, we got a number of messages about misgendering Che Diaz, and we just mm-hmm. want you to know, <clears throat> I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my best. It was like midway through. I always forget. So we're we well, we're ju- we're doing. I got you. I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, John, I, I saw it happen live, and, and yeah. I didn't say anything. I was I was a. Um, a bystander who did not stop it. I will stop it. Well, okay, so I want to, yeah, we we did get a couple messages from people, and I went back and listened to the episode. I edited the episode, and then I listened to it. And we had a discussion at the beginning where uh, Kevin had said, I think, you're like, well, Sarah Ramirez, which also I will say, not only did we misgender, uh, uh, the actor's name is pronounced Sada Ramirez. It's Sada. Oh, I listened Sada. to uh, an interview with Michael Patrick King, and he constantly refers to Sada Ramirez. Sada. So it's Sada. But uh, but yeah, we said. Uh, is, si- that, is that like? Is that not to make light of the situation? But uh, is that like? You know, I caught Noki and Italian people caught Gnocchi, and it's just <laughs> like. <a> di- <laughs> <laughs> it's like a different. Well, so like, okay, I you know it's interesting because it really Sarah, I, but she's just you know saying gnocchi. I don't know. I mean, she's she's half Mexican, she's half Irish. And I don't mean to make light of this situation. No, sure, sure, sure. No, I I, I don't know. Family. That's a good. That's a good question. I don't know if like I wonder about that. I I mean, I have a name that is, uh, I guess, easy to pronounce, Corey, and um, so I never like went through all of elementary school with her being like uh, it's actually Sada. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know. I well, mean, I, I will say she, that part seems. Does, does, that, do they say that, or does just Michael Patrick King say it? Everyone else on the, it's, it's so it actually it wasn't an interview. It was the, it's the Sex and the City Writers Podcast. That's what I meant to say, and um and they all said Sada. Okay. Um, so I, I take, up until I that moment, Yoki yeah. Kind of back, but I, I will say they're back out of that like Homer Simpson in the in the hedge. Yeah, but there's nothing worse than someone saying someone in a. Uh, Mexican restaurant in New York City saying, I will have an enchilada. <laughs> like, yeah. there's, n- I d- get out of here. I don't care. But, um, but that is not what we are saying about uh, Sada Ramirez's name. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, people that are trying to be overly culturally sensitive call it enchiladas, enchiladas. But <laughs> also, um, but also no, we people- start. Some Dude, people trying so to be overly watch. culturally sensitive were Corey and John because they told me it'd be offensive to <laughs> to call them they Diaz instead of yeah. they Diaz. <laughs> And I want to also point out that the, they, the entire point of that conversation was to not have you do what you just did. <laughs> like, that is, like, basically being like, yeah, mom this and was, dad said I couldn't take any cookies like this, like how I'm taking cookies yeah, and then eating this them. Is, this was literally three minutes of Corey and I tiptoeing through a minefield yep. only to have you just come do cartwheels <laughs> through it. Yeah, cartwheels Lee through it. Leroy Jenkins. One thousand percent. Let's do this. If you've ever wondered what it's like to... Uh, just Leroy Jenkins, yeah, Le- exactly. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Anyways, bottom line, bottom line, we know that uh, we know that uh, we 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 had looked up uh, that Sada Ramirez's pronouns were she they, mm-hmm. and in June of this year, they changed them to they them. Mm-hmm. The, the the character is they them. Uh, one thing I was going to say is that I know some people in my life whose pronouns are he, they, or mm-hmm. she, they. I mm-hmm. don't know anyone in my life whose pronouns are they, them. And and as a grammatical, uh, like a syntax exercise, like I realized that when we were focusing on it, we got it right. And then when we would go into re- like a conversation, we would get it yeah. wrong when I went back and mm-hmm. listened. And that is just a thing that I think we, you know, like we, I think you said this, Kevin, in some text, you're like, we're like learning and getting used to it and trying our best and obviously getting it wrong because we are like idiots watching the show, which yeah. we have said before, Yeah, which doesn't excuse well, that's, it. We're that's, just... That actually, and this is not, this is actually one of the things when we were done podcasting and it was really fun to make fun of Che Diaz's comedy special because I think like, I've seen a bunch of <laughs> which, other funny comedians I picking like, on I like, it. I like to refer to it as Che Diaz's TEDx talk. TEDx, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Che Diaz doing a TED talk. But, yeah, but I do think one of the one of the cool things, especially like when you're on the internet and conversations like this feel so intense. One of the things I appreciated is like to see like a gender conversation in just like a funny, mm-hmm. like Che Diaz seems like a a chill, funny character, and that mm-hmm. was the whole point of her their special when they were like. 
um, you know, talking about like referring to probably like Silence of the Lambs and like all mm. of these different um, transgender or like weird gender characters in movies are always like in horror movies or they're sad. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was kind of after some of the messages came in and just thinking about like, oh, that is like cool that it was just like a fun, a, a fun, funny stand up special. I'm sorry, a fun stand-up special. It wasn't funny. But a fun <laughs> stand-up special that was like a... Uh, seems like Shay Diaz is like used to people messing this up all the time. And yeah. it's just like, uh, please chill out. You're breathing too heavy. Like, it's all good. You know? Yeah. So so that's kind of where I want Shay Diaz to, to come on the pod and just be like, it's all good, boys. I would like... I think Shay Diaz... As long Diaz, as you're trying... Yeah, that's right. I think Che Diaz enjoys people getting worked up about these things, so Che Diaz can say, "Hey, maybe you should calm down with some weed, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you have well, a toke? You ever tried they weed? Said, they said when they go to the Yankees game, that's their favorite thing to do. Uh, yeah, their favorite thing. To, their confused, favorite thing so. is to do is to put on a Yankees cap and watch. So I'm sure if they show. listened to the pod and heard us stammering our way through True. addressing that, they would probably get a kick out of it. I do think and as then. much as much hell as we've given Che Diaz, I I think you're right that Che Diaz would come on the podcast and talk about talk about the issue. And I also like how how we say their entire name every single time. <laughs> we've never just said Che. It's always been Che Diaz. Yes, Che Diaz. Uh, yeah, but this. Uh, this is a podcast about Carrie Preston, and so uh, yes. we're going to be discussing Carrie Preston and uh, Charlotte York, Charlotte York Goldenblatt, of course. One thing that I do want to say before we get off of Che Diaz is that Kevin <laughs> and I were trying to work out a character called Michael Che Diaz. <laughs> 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 it's a stand-up character that's a combination of Michael Che and Che Diaz. Michael Che Diaz, <laughs> like, man, gender. Yo, gender is weird. <laughs> People get real worked up about gender. I'm not trying then, to check the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know what he would say. I don't know what he say. Wait, can I? I did. I did a show. I've told you guys <laughs> this, but I did a show with Michael Che when I first started doing stand up, and I was just trying to play it cool, like in the back of the room talking. And then my mom came up and was like, "You were my favorite and my son," <laughs> and he was like, "Cool, man. This is your mom." And I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> <laughs> also, also, that was like an East L.A. gangbanger accent for Michael Che. Cool, man. Well, that's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Your mom me. seems cool. He just always like he his eyes he, are like closed. He's like, oh, cool. I guess yeah, he good. has the very the very chill, cool Michael Che. Yeah, totally. Dude, him, man, him and Hannibal Burris, him and the Handle Burris both have the, that closed eyed, just kind of like smoke a lot yeah. of weed look. Yes, yeah, fun. I don't even know if he smokes a lot of weed, but he has that. He's he's he has that, that chill. Vibe. Yeah, yeah. I need that. Um. Well, let's watch the episode here. What uh, episode four? Episode right, four. About, what's it's what's called? Uh, uh, is it uh, some of my best friends? Some of my I best think. friends. Is that, is that the title? The title is some of my best friends. Sounds What's like uh, they're going to be dabbling in race. Let's uh, let's hop in. That's like that's There's gonna a... be like the the hat trick of uncomfortable subjects for us. <laughs> what is it? Gender, sexual Gender. assault. Now we have to do race. Have fun, well, people. Go. Welcome to a very special Bradshaw boys. Let's go. <laughs> oh Put gosh. on your hazmat suits and grab the uh, <laughs> unscrew oh, that man. canister like we're in uh, the Rock <laughs> taking out <Yeah>. those bulbs. <laughs> These subjects will be toxic. <laughs> Who best to handle them than three straight white men? <laughs> Coming in for a hot take. All right, let's hey, go. that's who, that's who's handled all these subjects for all of eternity because they won't <laughs> hand the mic to anyone else. Let's, let's give them one more stab. <laughs> Just one more stab in 2021. Here they go, the Bradshaw boys. Put on your cringe faces and Katie, <laughs> read the review. Take it away, Katie. Corey, I got a question. Tell me. Do you ever feel like Carrie Bradshaw and a deadline? You're stressed. Oh. You're not sure what to do. Oh, my gosh. You're, All you're the a time. little bit agitated. I got a solution yeah, for you, and actually. It, what is it? You know me. I'm a gamer. Angry you're Birds. You're a huge gamer. Journey. Angry Birds. Oh, my gosh. The game on the app. And then Journey, yep. like like the band. Don't stop believing. Yeah. 
new Angry Birds game. Dude, I love Angry Birds. I love pulling back the bird and shooting it and destroying things. It's so much fun. It's like, I like to imagine that I'm pulling the bird back and shooting it through the gap in Richard's teeth and just hitting him in the back <laughs> of the throat. And I'm doing it all for Samantha. All new Angry Birds Journey, full of fun puzzles, challenging levels, and delightful destruction. It's available for mm. free in the app and play store trust me this is a five cosmo experience angry birds journey mobile this is, puzzle game is going to bring you hours of fun huge five cosmo experience go get it for free google play store in the app store hey there this is laura i want to invite you to check out our show shelter in place Through carefully crafted stories, open-hearted interviews, and artful sound design, we invite you in each episode to escape not out of life, but into it. Recently, we won the Changing the World One Moment at a Time Award at the International Women's Podcast Awards. You can find us at shelterinplacepodcast.org or anywhere you listen. We'd love to have you in our neighborhood. Episode 4. Some of my best friends. Looking to move forward, Carrie meets with self-made real estate broker Seema Patel. Meanwhile, Charlotte plans a high-stakes dinner party for LTW as Miranda and Naya connect over the frank realities of motherhood. And now, back to the boys. My dick is upside down. Are we on? We're on. Yeah. You just wow. singing our favorite song, dude. George Washington, man, love that guy. Um, welcome back. Welcome Sarah, back. It's funny that we're back because um, uh, Charlotte goes through the Jeff, the Jeff, Joff, Goff debacle. Yeah, we we just went through that. The Joff debacle. Oh the yeah, Joff with debacle with Sarah Sada. Yeah, so we, yeah, we can relate. Yeah, we can relate. We absolutely right. We I've been Some saying my Jeff my whole life. I thought it was I thought it was I didn't realize it was Joff. Also a big big Bradshaw Boys thing, uh with the heavy coffee theme at the beginning. Uh yeah. Oh, yeah. Bradshaw Boys are coffee fans. We've done coffee pods in the past and we are um your classic snobby Brooklyn coffee bros. We are for sure. We are insufferable. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. I will say we are very insufferable. However, anytime anyone's had any coffee that I've made, they've said this is really good coffee, which mm-hmm. only makes me more insufferable. Cor- Corey, you gave as a baby <laughs> gift. You gave us like a like a thirty pound bag of delicious coffee to oh, cold yeah. brew. Yeah, it was like a really good, thoughtful present. Actually, we we drank the shit out of that and it kept us up. I I gave it to you because I knew you were going to need it. Shout out to Mighty Oak Roasters in Queens, Dude, New York. So good. Wood oh, fire man. roasted coffee. Fan, I mean, some of the best cold brew you'll have in your entire life. Not even sponsored, but I will. We're not sponsored. I will spend that. 35 minutes just talking about that coffee if given the opportunity. Some it's of my so best good. friends, some of my best friends drink coffee. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <clears throat> but I guess we saw we saw everyone's coffee choices here. Yeah, Carrie, we s- Gary yeah. is uh, old school Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee, when that overflowed, she went to the bodega, which, by the way, extremely realistic New York scene in and just like that. Yeah, the yeah. bodega. You get, you get to know your bodega people. You talk about your bodega people. Yep, that's true. You like they would totally give you one of those like pre wrapped rolls that are sitting out if they knew something bad happened to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she takes it dark and not sweet, or was it dark and sweet? I think dark, dark. and not sweet. I think. Oh. Which I think just means black coffee. Just black coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, Carrie's Carrie's really complicated. She can't just call it black coffee. Charlotte was a uh, non-fat latte. Non-fat latte. Her and LTW non-fat, were both LTW, non-fat lattes. Classic non-fat lattes. Uh, and what did Miranda have? Miranda. What did Miranda have for coffee? She probably had black coffee, but she was afraid to call it black coffee because she was afraid people would think she was talking about race and being confused again. They cut the scene, but she just she had Irish coffee. She was just drunk on Bailey's. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that's probably what it was. Um, that's so funny. Um, but should we, we should we go through the 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 yeah. breakdown here? Yeah, let's go happy? through. Yeah, the, what's, yeah. what's the breakdown? Great. Uh, I'll just read my notes. Everyone loves coffee was my first note. <laughs> uh, field trip drama. Uh, Charlotte gets completely put on blast by Maureen or some 
some uh, woman who just says she drops balls. Yeah. Didn't didn't like that. Um, uh, Carrie says she's going to sell her um, apartment and her friends say you should halt, which I've never heard before. I, I have and heard I that before, actually. Hungry, ang- hang- hungry, angry, lonely, tired. It's a big like hungry. therapy or addiction thing or whatever. I'm I know, but I, I've only heard halt I- in reference to how to stop jerking off. <laughs> and I'm dead serious. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes. What is it? I mean, what I guess that would go toward hungry, the hungry, angry. What is it? Lonely, lonely or, or tired? tired? Lonely, yeah. tired. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that goes towards like if if it's an addiction. Dude, like, where'd you get that? Like Reddit nofap or something like that? No, back in back like Christian youth group type stuff. Dude, youth group classic. Dude, how much back. how much better would it be to rather than to halt? from jerking off is to halt from selling your $50 million apartment (laughs) 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 because, because in like a year, once you processed it, you're still going to want to jerk off at some point, but in the other circumstance, you just close and have $50 million. What what if Carrie, what if Carrie said that she's like, yeah, I know halt. Isn't that when, when you're thinking about finger blasting yourself, you just supposed to halt. (laughs) Just don't do it. (laughs) Um, so then after that, we meet Seema, who comes in strong. Seema comes, comes in like, hot. You know, comes in like a cowgirl, stopping that cigarette. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved Seema. Mm. Uh, Seema is going to sell the apartment, but we need to get rid of some things, maybe bring back a Peloton. Um, and uh, and beige up the apartment. Um, and Carrie and Seema start ripping cigs again. Um, there's a, a little bit of Shay podcast drama. Uh, Mm -hmm. there's the, the woman who I I, I didn't really catch like what they were trying to accomplish in that scene. Were they trying to, to, to suggest that there were the two people in the podcast that were dating and it was like a little lover's quarrel. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think they were trying to, Oh, Oh yeah. But Bobby Lee's character was dating. Yeah. Bobby Lee's character was dating the social media manager and the yeah. social media manager, I think was a, is a musical theater actress. I think she was in a, a, a big show recently, but I'm not sure that's what Katie said. Okay. Um, then we have, um, Charlotte and Harry trying to form their dinner and thinking about inviting friends outside of their own race and having to go kind of bother the neighbors. Um, Carrie, of course, and Anthony, um mm-hmm. oh that that comes later uh we have a great scene with nia wallace and miranda mm-hmm. about ivf um there's uh a great scene with carrie in her open house where she meets like kind of the first one-off like creepy male character very len schneider feel oh yeah definitely like old len when schneider she's, she's standing on like that bear rug and he's like you want to go see the bathroom and i was like there's, there's a little throwback the bedroom yeah. bedroom the bedroom, sorry. <laughs> you want to watch me take a? You want to watch me take a dump? <laughs> hey, do you want to see how strong my stream is? They say I've got a golden stream, like a golden blat. Um, we have the LTW party, and just like one of my favorite scenes, we'll, we'll talk about it. Charlotte just like crushes it yeah, in it front comes of the guests. In just, yeah, yeah, such a great scene. Um, and then after that, we have Stanford. Um. Saying he's going to Japan, left Carrie now going to Japan with one of his TikTok stars, and Anthony announces announces the divorce, and of course that was I think the sudden uh, Willie Garson sudden leaving from the show, which was really 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 sad. Yeah. Um, you have LTW and Charlotte becoming besties, and then Carrie and Seema sharing insensitivities about each other, and just like that we began we began our real friendship. Look at that. Um. um Lots of stuff. Ha- lots of stuff happened this episode. Lots so, of stuff. I lots of stuff happened. I will say I remembered why we didn't see Miranda's coffee, because Miranda is at home and Brady and his girlfriend smell weed smoke on her, and she's oh, like, I had not. Ca- I'm, and she's like, I'm not caffeinated for this conversation. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't remember how she was making coffee. Yeah, good call. <clears throat> um, well, why don't we start with Miranda's? Yeah, Brady storyline. really. Get- Brady really giving her the third degree. Brady really giving her third degree. I um, Miranda's storyline was pretty limited to just her and Nia Wallace's conversation, where she, I don't know. Yeah, let's well, let's, let's talk just, about the go to. I mean, let's address, let's ad- let's address the elephant that's been in the room for every episode so far. No one that has worked on this television show has any relation to weed. 
That is the day after very you. True. The day after you wake up that is very true. Nobody. <laughs> that that is not how it works. It's it's nope. not even like they're me- They're just the most. They're owning themselves every time. It was like, whoa, yeah. smell like. Or if they did it, it would be like, is that weed? It wouldn't just be like, mom, you reek of weed. And then and then oh. Brady is like, brings up the fact that it's 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 legal now, and yeah. Miranda's still a square about it. Yeah, you're right. No one, everyone here has a has a very dare to keep your kids off drugs relationship to weed. Completely. Oh yeah. Wouldn't the uh, just a slight smidgen? What wouldn't it be like? Walk in, hey mom, how are you? Right. Is that weed? No. Oh my gosh, I think that's weed. Like, yeah. Why is that not the the scene? It just seems like such a self own to to write it like that when that isn't that does not happen and then and then they have uh his girlfriend explain something to her about weed also yeah and we also need to talk about the fact that steve and miranda have zero boundaries on how to raise their kid with (laughs) their with the girlfriend living with them like i think his girlfriend is a runaway or something yeah she's always there and i mean i listen some parents may i mean Maybe this is what parents do now. They like their kids, boyfriends or girlfriends sleep over, but she's essentially with them all the time and they clearly don't like it. And now she's kind of sassing them. That to me, I was like, I was like that girl, that girl and Brady suck. If my my son had had a girlfriend or boyfriend that came to the home and like sassed my wife, I like Katie, I would put an end to that so fast. Absolutely. I know. (laughs) I would just be like, nah, you're, you're good. Yeah. I mean, I that's know. actually that's like the argument against like mega liberal parenting that it's like that. It's like, what is your role if they're just like, oh, we got you ben, don't we got get ben it Shapiro mom. on the show today. What? What's that? We got Ben Shapiro on the show. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. <laughs> um, here. Here's the problem. Here's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like. You have to look. This, you have to. You have to angle your head down and look up when you do it. Here's the uh, problem. Here's the problem. Uh, I I will I will own Miranda with facts and with logic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, <laughs> no. But it's like, what is your job as a parent if your son can come in and be like, "Hey, I just fucked my girlfriend." Oh, you smell like drugs. Drugs aren't a big deal. It's it just doesn't. It's bad parenting, and I don't necessarily buy that Miranda would be a bad parent. Yeah. I, I agree with you, but this is a TV show, and she needed to have she needed to have a shitty experience with Brady so she could console Nia Wallace in the restaurant. That's true. Uh, that's true. <coughs> she's in that over her true. head. She's she, not. Oh, she's she's like, not being a good mom, though. I will. I will say I agree, this. I agree with you. She's not being a good a good mom, but I think Nia need like needed to hear that it it can be tough. Although it's tough, it's still worth it, and right. you should you should continue to do it. Yeah, I think what you should do, you don't have to tell your kids not to have sex, but you sh- they still need to clean up the room. Yeah. You don't want to be stepping on their whoa, jizz whoa. Filled Some- condoms. S- someone's turned from Ben Shapiro to Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Make your bed, Brady. <laughs> Dude, Kevin is coming in hot with all the internet conservative <laughs> takes today. Hey, listen, Brady needs structure. Brady, if you go back if you go back to the old <laughs> myths of our day, you you will find it's true. You will find in the myths that there is structure and every man needs a quest. Uh, Brady, need a quest. clean your damn room. Clean, clean your room. Brady, just start, just make Brady. sure to clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell the truth and clean your it's, room. It's listen. <laughs> it's and drugs drugs may be drugs may be legal, but that does not mean they do not affect you, especially at a younger age like where you at at seventeen. Have, have you have you tried eating nothing but meat, Brady? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brady should man. play a contact sport because a contact sport <laughs> will socialize him to other men. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, um. uh, I'm crying on the inside. Okay, um, so let's talk about the Nia Wallace conversation. So they yeah. they go to a, uh, a presumably a, like a really nice restaurant mm-hmm. Naya messes up the reservation and the and the host is not budging and did they put that in there to have 
Miranda be confronted with like another white savior moment. I think they put it in there to show Nia Wallace having a having making mistakes too and trying to trying to it's like Miranda now knows a little bit like I'm not going to I'm not going to try yeah. to save her but showing yeah. Nia Wallace being like um listen uh I did do this. Like Nia Wallace kind of maybe kinda, not being like do you know who I am but just being a little more like I'm very confident. And then Nia, her Nia falling Wallace on her face. is like is like she forgets her ID, she makes yeah. reservations for a restaurant in California She's rather than totally New York. Scattered. I mean, yeah. it's but we learned but, that. It's, but I guess it is. It's the IVF. It's the IVF. It's the IVF, brain. It's the IVF which, defense. It's the IVF yeah. defense. You know, it's it's that's why she killed her husband. It was the IVF. That's what it is. <laughs> it's the IVF defense. I, yeah, I think, I think, there was a, I think there was a clever. Right, these were the best Nia Wallace scenes, and these were the best Charlotte scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm, and sure. I totally. think like, they were very, obviously written out. I. They were written by a black woman, Kelly Goff, but also she was a fan of Sex in the City because I've like mm. I've been a fan of hers and I like looked at her Facebook before we started this, and they seemed to that scene in particular didn't seem like a trap for Miranda. It, like it just seemed like, yeah, you know, uh, black people because even the guy it wasn't a teaching moment because it was like <clears throat> Nia Wallace and then the the guy was um the what's it called the uh host was was black as well and i feel like mm-hmm. it wasn't i feel like a few episodes ago i would have been ready for the cringe moment that it was like just another one of those scenes mm-hmm. that was like hold on a second and instead it was just like yeah this is what it's like to go to the restaurant like anyone else and yeah. it felt it felt like the characters had deeper motivations in this scene, and that's where the IVF thing I think was so in, so cool because it it created another layer of Nia Wallace, and it didn't just become about one little thing. It became about like what the characters' motivations are, not just like the little wacky things that happen throughout their day. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, and it did a nice job tying it, making it relatable to a younger demographic. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I think the show is really important because it's it's talking about wi- women in their 50s and 60s presumably living in New York after they've lived a large chunk of their life. Mm-hmm. But it's time it's time this thing back in that 20 something year olds, 30 something year olds who may be experiencing these things can relate to. So I I I really appreciated that as well because I think if you if you don't tie in those type types of scenarios then it might feel out of touch a little bit or not out of touch but out of place for a younger demographic wait what's the thing you're saying that they can relate to the ivf or yeah like i, I mean i don't know how many percentage wise how many 15 six year old women uh, or birthing people are going through ivf right. but uh i think like you know a lot of yeah 20 people in 30 year olds are 30s yeah sure and, and like there's not many other themes for that age range right that's in true. my opinion i mean there's a t- ton of talk about weed young people love weed bro <laughs> young people Young people <coughs> love smoking doobies. Dude, they love. Um, have we had a single orgasm in this show so far? I've had a ton when I've watched. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, mean, every, every like, three or four each episode. Three, yeah, Bra- totally. Brady, Brady and Girlfriend. Yeah, right? Brady and Girlfriend. Well, we couple. didn't see it actually happen, but we they were on their way, presumably. Che Diaz, every time they light up their their uh, <laughs> their weed. <laughs> every uh, time. <laughs> um, let's talk about let's talk about Carrie and Seema. I want to. I would prefer to save Charlotte for last. That <coughs> yeah, let's save Charlotte for last. That was the, that was um, really fun in the, in the show. Um, what are our thoughts on Seema? Um, oh, one thing, one quick Easter egg before Seema got there is when I think when S- Carrie was waiting for Seema to get there. Um, they show Carrie walking back around the apartment and looking at all the stuff. And mm-hmm. the instrumental that was playing is the song Hello, It's Me from it's the title of the first episode. And it's the song uh, that played at Big's funeral. So they played oh, like smart. a sweet instrumental version of that. Um, yeah, is that why she started crying? Mm-hmm. Probably. Mm-hmm. I think she she started crying from all the letters Peloton has sent the show to be like, can our lawyers <laughs> talk to you? Um, I yeah, I mean. Let's uh yeah, let's first, first of all a lot of a lot of I, I haven't heard Bradshaw. Like the last name Bradshaw. Everyone's referring to her as Miss Preston, Kelly or Carrie Preston. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, I feel like I feel like they're laying the groundwork for like a big Are we like, 
My, not... my question is, are we the are we now the Preston pals? Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Moving forward, we're the Preston pals for sure. Yeah. I thought we were the Che Bays. <laughs> yeah, Che Bays. <laughs> I think we're the Che Bays. Che Bays. Um, yeah, I think we're the we're the Preston pals. I, yeah, it. I I think that uh, they're they're definitely going to bring the name Bradshaw back mm. a lot. They're setting the. I think all these episodes are like very much a like setting the table for like a mid season thing because even Miranda's yeah. thing was like. They didn't. They also didn't hit the drinking hard over the head. But we saw her sitting with like a big, big glass of Cabernet, talking to the phone on Carrie. And so I know we're talking about Carrie, but like I feel like all of these things for some of them are setting the table. And they're in that in that Michael Patrick King interview. He even said he was like, "We want to show Miranda in a place of no control right now because she's always mm. in control." So I think it's like they're mm. trying to set that up for all the characters right now. Mm. Um. So so Seema, Seema comes in uh, and is her her power broker or real estate broker. Mm-hmm. She decides to sell the apartment. She is needs to remove all her personal artifacts from the apartment and quote beige it up. Yeah, um, she said, "Love this, but it's got to go. It's all got to go." Uh, we have about as much experience uh, buying and selling fifty million dollar apartments uh, as we do with uh, race and gender. But sure. um, do you th- do you think that's that's real realistic? <laughs> like, are they? Is that what happens when you sell a fifty million dollar apartment? I don't know. There's, that's selling Sunset Show. Is that how it works? Yeah, I don't I mean, know. I think I, you have to I, have a you have to have a a, a palette. You probably have to decorate a little bit, but you don't want. You want it to be general. You want it to look like Big's funeral, like as <laughs> as as vague as possible. It'd be like, could I live here? Is this a place I could die? Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I I do feel like maybe it should be lived in a little bit, but like yeah. not specific because you don't want you probably don't want any reminder of the last person that lived there because then you'll be like, oh no, it's not mine. It's got to yeah. be all psychological. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That, who pays for that? Is, that's what I was does wondering. Does Carrie pay for that, or does like the does the realtor have like a you know a staging warehouse where they have a bunch of stuff Whoa. that they can move in? You're sell thinking like a businessman. I, I mean, know. I do. I, I like. I wonder because she talked about her movers who like they move Picassos and stuff. Seems like sema has got a whole operation of this thing. Yeah, that's like yeah, they come in. And it's probably part of her fee or something like mm. that, where it's like, you know, I cover this much, but then I get this much of the sale. Like, maybe that's like how she does it. I yeah. thought that, too, though, because she was making a lot of changes and she changed the whole apartment totally. Mm. And then she brought in a new Peloton. <laughs> she must have been mega hot shot because she has her own driver. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And her well, driver lets her her driver lets her smoke in the car. I yeah. mean, if, if you're a realtor and you're and you're making like three to six percent depending if you're representing the buyer and the seller mm-hmm. like that's i mean carrie's apartment's going for what 20 mil like 20 million probably yeah, i mean that's at least between 10 and 20 so maybe so, more so sema's bringing down 300 to six hundred thousand dollars if she closes that deal so yeah you do you do three or four of those a year you can you do pretty well you're doing yeah. well enough to get on okay cupid <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's yeah. So the 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 <laughs> conflict between Seema and Carrie and Carrie were the two insensitivities. Carrie tells Seema she's proud of her for getting out there, and then of course Seema uh, breaks a picture frame that was on Big's nightside uh, dust what bedside table, table. Bedside table. Yeah, and uh, Seema doesn't really feel like it's that big of a deal. Yeah, and Carrie gets really really upset with her. Yeah, um, I think a little emotionally upset, and uh, you know they have this conversation about understanding and hurting each other's, um, in being insensitive towards one another. What did you all feel about that? Um, I thought it was. I mean, now that I think back, and I guess it's not a big deal, but there was part of it where they set them up to be such fast friends really quickly. Yeah, and I thought it was a little unrealistic. Again, this is a TV show, so like they need to do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing that I think is interesting is that in every story, 
they have taken the three storylines and paired them up with a new person. So mm-hmm. it's like Carrie's storylines with Seema, uh, Charlotte's is with LTW, and Miranda's is with Nia Wallace. So they've and basically also with Che, <clears throat> and also and with Che. Che is also in there, and also um, with Che. <laughs> That's what they say at an Episcopalian church w- that Che Diaz goes to. Peace be with, with you, and also with and Che, also with che. <laughs> and also with Che, um, and also with Che. Also with che. Also with che. Uh, is there going to be a, a monstrous chat and chew with? All, Everyone with all six people. It's just Dude, like a big so sick. boardroom. <laughs> if they just had like, no, they they go to the Ace Hotel, whatever the restaurant is there, and they do the big pig roast. And it's just like seventeen <laughs> people around, roast. and they're just like all t- like sixteen people, and they're just like, so tell us more about gender, and they're like, what about race? And then one's like, they're like, what's OK Cupid like? And she's like, it's Sima, like a good time. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. What is I'm, is Seema Indian? Yeah, Seema's Indian, I believe. Okay, I just want everyone to know that I did an Italian accent. Okay, so that those had no <laughs> connection to each other. I believe she's South Asian. I think so. Okay. Um, but uh, um, she, I'm not sure the actresses. Um, what the okay. actress is, but uh, so yeah, anyway. big 16 person chat and chew is on its way. Can't we can only cash. hope. They have, they have to, right? Because uh, I'm assuming they're going to fold these friendships into the larger group, or maybe not. Or maybe that's like the the theme of this show is that there's the central three, and then they splinter off and have their other other friends, which well, is incredibly realistic. Yeah, the three I mean, of us are very fast friends. We're very close. We hang out and do stuff, but we also have other friends that we don't that we see that we don't hang out with all as a big group. Right, you do. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> no. What um, the fuck? It's it's just it's just you. What the fuck? Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. What about? I feel like one of the most authentic moments of the series so far, when you think about what Sex in the City was, was Carrie getting mad over a tiny thing that was not a big fucking deal at all. Yeah, I mean, I I always I always go back on that and say, one, that's very Carrie, and two, uh, her husband just died. So it's like I know, but I, you, you know that Carrie Bradshaw is going to be a person that it's like sixteen years in, people are still totally. going to be like, her husband. Died. I'm, su- she, I'm she, super. I'm yeah, super. Yeah, but you got to. It's like it's been what a week and a half. Like I agree with I agree with that, but I think that I like, don't agree with it. I'm Team Carrie here all the way. <laughs> Dude, she's hiring someone that that is bragging about moving Picassos, and she like that is actually she, true. Yeah, she broke a pic. Like, I'm sorry, she should treat every single thing. And I I think Carrie reacted emotionally, but I think she has the right to be upset, especially because that is something that was near and dear to the passing of her husband. So, I think Seema, although I don't think Seema should could should gravel at her feet and beg for an apology, she should have been more delicate with how she handled that person right, well maybe it's just a sign that i've never had been in love and then had that person die or hired so movers or hired movers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've always had your friends more realistically <laughs> more realistically <laughs> you've never hired movers that's more you what poor it is. piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, you no, would have I, to just I, I, yell at your friend for breaking a picture. <laughs> That's as yeah. far as you could go. I I think an appropriate <clears throat> response would have been not. I think a more realistic response would have been her like maybe crying and just and like and and Seema being like, "What is it? It was just a picture frame." And Carrie being like, "It's not just a frame. It means this." Instead of instead of her attacking Seema so head on, you know, yeah. I think like. I know if I had something like that and that happened, I probably would just be really bummed and quiet and, and put out rather than attack the, the person. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, it was, there was a moment in it <clears throat> where the train kept going and Carrie like kept getting madder and madder. And yeah. then I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's one being classic Carrie. But two, I was like, if you were in this moment, like, are you ever in a moment where you're like, have you like ever been mad at someone and then you just know like, you know what? I'm mad and I'm just going to keep the, I'm keeping my foot on the gas. Like, I'm just yeah. like, I understand what's happening. I'm still going to go. That's yeah. what I, that's where I feel like she was at. <laughs> and, uh, but it's like, you know, like you said, it seems as like supposed to be a professional and not have things broken. And it's like, yeah. that is a, that is a keepsake. Yeah. And when, when Seema was like, 
it was a personal artifact. You should have. You should have that. Hit it. That part, I was, I was like, like, no, 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 no. I was like, listen, no, 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 Seema. No, Seema. No. Listen, no. listen. We're paying you a bunch. We all know that you got kicked off Million Dollar Listing for this same thing. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, not the first time this has happened. Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to give ample time to discuss Charlotte because that was like one of the most badass Charlotte scenes. Wait, wait, I hold think on, hold on. Oh no. Oh no. S- Guys, our numbers are down. Our podcast numbers are down. The alarm just went off. Our fucking numbers are down. Our socials are not <laughs> rocking with the podcast right now. What the hell is the deal? <laughs> John, when was the last time you fucking posted? Corey, our socials are down. What I'm the fuck? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, we need, to have a meeting. Not, we need to have a meeting about it right now. This will not stand. We need to get the whole team together. Get Katie in here. Get the, get all 11 other people that are part of our podcast. <laughs> we need to, the we fucking need to, numbers are down. We need to strategize about what we can do. Corey, you mentioned that we could live stream our, our episodes. I did should mention we that we could live stream these. Yeah, maybe we, we, got, maybe we, we should do start, that. Yeah, we got to start doing that. Yeah, come all on, Carrie. Right, sorry, you got to you got to post on your socials. That, that was, was that was <laughs> that was just a, that was that was so realistic when that happened in the show. <laughs> I will say I will say that was one of the most realistic like scenes that won me over for Che. Che kind of had an attitude of like, "What's going on here?" Like, I feel <laughs> yeah. like Che was actually kind of chill just about like, it and was just like, "What the fuck?" Like Che Shut was up. like Che was. I mean, like Che actually said maybe the most realistic comedian thing they've said so far, where it was like, "Yeah, I mean." I have to do this stuff all the time, you yeah. know, for my own stuff. So it was yeah. like, oh yeah, Che like finally gets it a little bit che, in che their get, actual che character. Yeah. Um, I did want to say that, uh, um, uh, Kevin, earlier you said that you were doing an Italian accent, and while that's not, while that is, uh, you know, probably not the best call, uh, Sarita Chowdhury, the uh, actress, was raised in Italy. Oh shit! She's raised in Italy and Mexico, and she's half Indian and half English. And she was in a freaking John Cassavetes movie. She's she's been in a million movies. Wait, that's um, also that's Logan Roy's wife. I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, in Succession. In Succession, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where I recognized her from. No, never uh, mind. I think you just committed a Charlotte at the dinner party, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did. Sorry. <laughs> hey, listen, well, listen. It happens in Sex in the intro. City. We could. What better intro to talk oh, about Charlotte? She was in the Green gosh. Knight, though. She was in the Green Knight. She plays oh, the mother. That's what the I Green meant. Knight. I saw her in the Green Knight. Yeah, 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 totally. Dude, that is so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh! I've some of my Green Knight. I heard it's Some awesome. of my best friends are in Succession and also <laughs> and also a twenty four movies and also other movies. Uh, <laughs> she's been in a million things. Um, okay, let's talk about Charlotte at the uh, Charlotte at the dinner. Guess who's mm-hmm. coming to dinner? It's Charlotte and it's Harry. Charlotte, it's Harry. Nervous Harry. Nervous, Nervous Harry. Sweating. Harry. Best Harry line of the thing was, she's like, you're already sweating. He was like, I wonder why. Because <laughs> Charlotte was giving him the third degree. That line and when he said the Zadie Smith line. That oh, was great. Dude. The Zadie They've Smith been... line. That's, that's the fucking difference. I'm not like we've uh, people want to like this show. And this is like, this is, this was so genuinely funny and so genuinely not written by just like an old gay white dude. That's like, let me tell you about race. We Mm got to throw hot water on these, on these trans drag queens, (laughs) Samantha. That's how we show representation. You know, like, I think that this was just genuinely funny. It wasn't like. Yeah, like Harry was doing his best and your best is like a little cringy and and it's funny. And he's like, I just thought that was like that got my first genuine goofaw of the whole series when he said Zadie Smith. Mm -hmm. Totally. It was so funny. I love it. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was really good. And then I thought um, the Charlotte thing. Actually, I'm really glad the way. When they played the Charlotte thing of her being like, oh, my gosh, I know your husband or whatever. And her being like, I know the woman you're talking about. That's not me. They. I like that they played that, but I like that 
it wasn't again uh, Miranda like, but you're the teacher. Yeah, it, like yeah. I like that they played it, and then that they kind of let the rest of the thing play out, and then, and then the the later moment where LTW was like, we were nervous about you being the yeah, only white totally. people at the dinner. Like I yeah. think that shows those two characters are so alike. You know, mm-hmm. I love I love that friendship that's happening between the two of them. I like it. It's it, they're definitely it's definitely the the highest fashion friendship I think on the show so far. I mean, everyone's clothes are like pretty wild, but like they're always a certain version of like dressed in high fashion. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Also, I think it's I think there's like a tendency that is t- to me is sad that it's like whenever like a character and they're doing a good job throughout this series. I think growing it that was that was the point. But sometimes in movies. I mean that's that was Jennifer Hudson's problem though was just like no dimension b- beyond like um yeah beyond, beyond just the like black a character or whatever that and moved I here from the south and was like I love being here thank you Miss Bradshaw yeah and and I thought the truth of this that it made total sense character wise from like people's deepest human motivations which is where good writing comes from would be like a mom that's like, you wasted your money on art. And then Charlotte York, knowing who this character is and writing yeah. from being like, she's going to know all of these great black artists. And then mm-hmm. yeah. and then the cool thing is where representation, I think, is exciting is like not just being like, look, we showed a black character. You got to talk about all of these great black artists on a mm-hmm. TV show that people are going to go now look up and yeah. really yeah. are these important names. So I think that was a really cool way to... This is the best version of, I think, what Sex in the City would hope for is to put Charlotte in a new situation that seems very normal and not just like uh, not fall into the trap of being like, you know, not all black people look the same. Sometimes yeah. this happens to us all the time and it breaks my heart because the reality that from where I believe that was it was written was like, yeah, like we have bigger fish to fry than when white people mix us up with other people. It it happens all the time. So it's not a big mm-hmm. fucking deal to us. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt that that was, that it wasn't like a teaching moment. There was like other stuff right. to cover because it's probably that probably happens all the time and you wouldn't ruin a dinner party over it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So totally. I thought it was great. No, I love that. It, I think it was, it was the best was so scene fun. in the series so far. I would watch. I, yeah, I kind of want to rewatch just that scene. Cause I, I was just so proud of Charlotte. Like Charlotte, I think can sometimes get, <laughs> like not bullied but be like cowed to to not speak up and be timid and kind of like be working in the background and mm-hmm. i like when she stands up and like grabs attention and kind of like steers something so yeah i was yeah. i was really excited for her i thought that was super well done i'm glad that uh you know whenever and, and maybe charlotte's getting revenge on, on like the bunny type character i feel like that yeah that, the, the mom oh, is like yeah that's bunny true and she's she's really you know Showing Ooh, I didn't I didn't even think about a bunny connection. Yeah. Um I guess uh the last thing I want to talk about um is Stanford. Yeah. Um yeah. That was that was really sad when they this was the memory episode of Willie Garson. Um and Wait, did it um, say dedicated to? It did. Yeah. Wow. Did it say it did it I right at the end. Right yeah. at the end, after at the end yeah. of the credits. Yeah. Yeah, so they dedicated this episode to him and um, you know, I think uh he I'm not sure about this, but he left the show before he passed away, right? It wasn't that he passed away, uh, and that's why they had like he he immediately had to leave because he was sick. I think is that correct? I don't know. Um, I, I I actually do not know. I saw some articles. Yeah, I just saw at the end. There's the in memory of Willie Garson. It has yeah. it, and then it says, "Be kind to each other always." And so it's <clears throat> you know I I haven't really processed yet about how I feel about the way they kind of wrote him off the show maybe they'll try to like keep communication between him and Carrie mm. uh just from Japan mm-hmm. um but obviously that that felt a little um ha- heavy-handed obviously but i think given the, I? Cir- like, given the circumstances and knowing the real life scenario it it, it was what it was and it, really sad it really sad but yeah really sad um and i think that they showed it, kevin you said it last time like there's some things about Stan, Stanthony, the relationship there's mm-hmm. about that seem catty, and so yeah. this wouldn't come totally out of the blue. Um, it's it's 
it's sad and it's sad knowing the actual real life circumstances. Yeah. Um, it's also, I think such a, it's the real life circumstances are like so sad that it, it takes away from the actual like interesting, funny choice that he is managing like a teenage TikTok star in Japan. Yeah. Like yeah. that is such a ridiculous thing. That's actually, I think a pretty funny choice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It just is, you know, it's hit so hard over the head. Uh, yeah. Not hit over the head, but it's just such a glaring reality that it's like they had to do this because, you know, of his unfortunate death. Yeah. Well, what what I would hope is that and and I do think this we're on a we're on a journey of a season. And so sometimes mm. things feel unsatisfactory storytelling wise when really I think they know what they're doing. <laughs> and I do I do wonder if it's whether it's a letter or whether it's like a, a voiceover or some way. I think there's going to be more resolution to. Uh, Stanford's character than that, but um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was it was so sad because you, okay, it, yeah, that just I mean I think it was a shock to every it was a shock to everyone when Willie died, yeah, um, even his yeah. closest friends. So yeah, yeah. Do you think um, I have a question for you all about just the way the series is shaping up? Like we've said that they're setting tables. There's like traps laid that are like you know they're going to deal with Miranda's drinking at some point um there are budding female friendships now we're learning even more about these characters who at first seem like you know maybe side characters who are becoming like more uh central characters um and I think Seema is going to be one of them do you think that TV writing has changed. It has changed. But do you think that because the way TV writing has changed, it's going to completely change the way that this show plays out? Because to me, it seems like we used to get a season arc, but I feel like we would get more concise episodes of like this story, this story, this story. And it doesn't feel like we've gotten that as much. We've gotten it, but it, but it feels a little more like, I don't know where this is going, but I think we're going to get more of a, it's like more focused on the overall season. And I feel like sex in the city felt a little more sitcom as opposed to this show. Yeah. I felt like this episode was the first one of this series that we got. That was both. It was full season and totally. it was full series or yeah, full, no, sorry, full end, season and full episode at the end of the show is really Katie was like, man, I actually missed the voiceover. Yeah. Which I thought was like an interesting thing for her to say. Um, but sorry, Kevin, what were you saying? No, I was I was just gonna say I feel like that's the influence on um, miniseries and on um, just the growth of length of episodes that just change changes like the uh, the different devices you have to use to just get through twenty two minutes or thirty minutes or whatever, mm-hmm. and I feel like you take those away and you can just like the stories have grown more emotionally and there's like a little more depth to them. There's also certain things that you know i it's this it's the same way that it's like you could have the greatest writers the greatest performers and if you're doing three cameras with a laugh track it's not going to hit like seinfeld hit it's Mm -hmm. it's not going to hit the way friends hit or like even i love lucy Mm -hmm. and i think it's like you can't you can't really go back to to that and so i think they're kind of embracing with the camera work, they're embracing like the cinematic type filming yeah. and yeah. it looks mm-hmm. more like a movie and it's mm-hmm. stretched out. But, um, but Carrie hasn't floated away yet. She hasn't flown. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get so floating away. Sick. I'm a little bummed. I need to listen. I'm not saying this to be vulgar. I'm saying it cause this is this. <laughs> be, some of, some of these ladies need to come. Okay. <laughs> Well, I did think like, about this. I, I did think about yeah. I I, I <laughs> these I ladies are all in tough you. spots, and they need to get they need to get off. Uh, I mean, no, to, I, they, I need to, they need to introduce a new character, freaking Doctor Jackhammer, who just one by <laughs> one, he just shows up at their houses. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I did think be like, oh, you're an alcoholic, and you're you're stressed at school. Your husband just died. You're in a happy marriage, but you want to go back and relive your days of the rabbit, ladies. Doctor Jackhammer's here. Hello, <laughs> nice to meet you, Doctor Jackhammer. <laughs> Are you ready yeah. for your uh, appointment today? Thank you. 
<laughs> it's just Mads uh, Mickelson coming yeah, in. It's, right. it's Mads Mickelson. He's like kind of an older man, but incredibly sexy. Yes, I'm Dr. Um, Jackhammer. But uh, unfortunately, that's uh, man. We 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 went really. We went a long time doing our landmine dance uh, up top. That we unfortunately got to come to an end. I think um, we covered a lot of ground. We, here. There's, there was a lot to cover in there that was episode. A, it was there a was a great episode. There was a whole lot to cover. We need to do our um, Cosmo rating. Yeah. Ready? Uh, I have a question about this. Are we taking all Sex and the City canon into consideration, or just and just like that episodes for for the ratings? Yeah, um, I need to know. I need someone to answer that. I kind of feel like we should just take these episodes because I thought all about right. this when we were watching it, and there are things that I get frustrated at, and then I remember this is an entirely different show. It's in the yeah. same universe, but they, I, I heard Michael Patrick King also say that he was like the decision to not have samantha in the show is like the decision was not to not have samantha samantha is in the show it's just that she's in london and he's like but yeah. we knew that kim Cattrall wasn't going to be in the show because she didn't want to so he's like it's this universe and of course she's okay. always part of this universe so i think it's a whole different deal okay i'm a rating then mm, okay that does actually change things oh wow do you remember what i gave the first episode um, it should have been, should have been a five. It should have been a five. You gave it a four. Something. Legendary. You gave Did it you give some, it a three? Something. I don't know. No. Some dickhead. Some dickhead rating, and I mean that's because you had a dildo strapped to your head. That's true. Literally. Dude, Doctor uh, Jackhammer. Doctor <laughs> Jackhammer. Big, Mr. Big died. You can play Doctor <laughs> Jackhammer. Just sh show up with a dildo on your head. Doctor Jack. Dude, I'm Doctor <laughs> Jackhammer. Uh, um, I give this episode a 4.0. I, I really had fun watching it. I loved all the stories. I was engaged and entertained the, all, the whole time. Watching Charlotte just like, like, li like list off all those art pieces, something that she's really good at. Uh, I'm interested in SEMA. I had, we had a little Carrie emotional breakdown. Miranda and Naya felt really good for Miranda to not just be like a bumbling Mir Miranda. So I, I love this episode. I would watch, I'd watch it again. Really liked it. 4.0 um i'll give it a 4.0 it, it, my rating changed when we're saying we're rating the whole series i thought 100%. it was clearly the best of the entire series i thought it was cool to i forgot who wrote the last one but this one like kevin said was written by kelly goff um yeah also samantha irby who's a writer on it she i think wrote the the or like heavily influenced the first nia wallace miranda scene and it wouldn't surprise me if she helped you know like because it's all written in a writer's room so it's like i wonder if she dealt with some of the uncomfortable things at the dinner party scene and i felt like this was played it was just so much like more realistic and fun to watch yeah um and it's just cool to see other writers touches on it but uh i th <clears throat> yeah 4.0 strongest of the even though i gave the first one a five this you know this one very solid episode yeah very great to see a charlotte power moment mm -hmm. um yeah, totally. Um, I give it a four point oh as well. Um, Heck yeah! I dude, we just uh, megatroned. <laughs> I really was prepping for. I told you guys before we started. I was like, I really don't have a lot of things to pick on with this episode because I just thought it was so wonderfully executed. And I, when they announced that Kelly Goff was going to be part of the writing team. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to her on Left, Right, Center, just like a political podcast. And and I think it's really an inspiring thing to like – I was like, you can just be a screenwriter from being a political commentator. And I would encourage everyone to go like look at her website and look at her um, – I don't know, follow her on social media and stuff because she basically like left her dream of being like a political writer to be a screenwriter. And those are two different professions. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like this showed had the easily the best writing in the series. I f and then I also saw this. She just posted this on Facebook that is public. But she said, I want to thank Michael Patrick King, who's this for this story's journey. Wait, uh, he tirelessly supported my dream of writing an episode of television that reflected the contributions of black artists. Hmm. So it must have been a dream of hers for a long time. And then it says, the day we hung the, one of the Gordon Parks' most important photographs from the Civil Rights era on set was one of the proudest moments of my career. Mm. And I'm like, man, that's, like, so cool to maybe as a writer have this thought in your head of, like, 
I wonder if one day like I could do this and then it ends up in the show that you used to watch when you were in yeah. in high school. Like I just think that this is every bit of the culmination of like them wanting to be more diverse, but also writing at the top of their capabilities from like a young, new, talented writer. And I don't know. I'm very inspired by that. And I think everybody should be. And congrats to Kelly Goff on a wonderful episode. <coughs> and I'm excited. I, it, it makes me more excited for um, all of the different side characters, including Che Diaz in the show, to see mm-hmm. maybe now that we're past the initial part, like where these stories go. So I'm totally. over the moon. It It is a very interesting writing staff. And that like Samantha Irby also, who I was saying, like she – is a comedian and writes books, but I don't know yeah. if she was like started as a screenwriter. So it's like, yeah, they have some interesting other writers, which is great. I'm it's it's amazing. definitely like, it's that's, that's awesome. That's awesome that that was like her dream to make that happen. And it did. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that, Kevin. That's awesome. <coughs> um, and thank, thank you everyone for listening. If you haven't already, please, uh, toss up a, uh, a rating on iTunes or, yeah, yeah. Or do go head on over to Spotify. You Spotify can rate us on Spotify now. We got, ratings. we, we got, got forty six so far. Got forty six five star ratings on Spotify, and we are always taking more people. And we're you know where else more. we're taking more? We're taking more on our Patreon. Come right. on over there. We just posted an episode about going to, we're go, about going to Candice Bristol's uh, one woman show, which unfortunately has ended its run. So yeah. if you want to know a little bit of what it was like, uh, you can hear us talk about it there. Yeah. <laughs> just let the Bratch always take you through culture and theater. That's what <laughs> we're saying. Just, let us just mansplain her, her show. Let, yeah, let us just mansplain her show. We're mansplaining that's everything the, else. That's the Patreon. Yep. Oh, shit. Um, oh, crap. We got to go get our numbers up. <laughs> oh, shit. Our podcast numbers are... <laughs> everyone, oh, my gosh. Everyone. Everyone, man your socials. Post, post, Man post. your socials. <laughs> Get to your post. All right. Later, taters. Later, taters. Later, taters. The Bradshaw Boys stars Corey Cavan, John Sieber, and Kevin James Doyle. The show is produced by Jeremy L. Balin. For more information on the guys, check out their website at bradshawboys.com, on social media at the Bradshaw Boys. And if you see them in the street, tip your glass. Thanks for listening.